Uh, summer's upon us, and I'm soon gonna have to go on a trip in Vatten Tales, getting this thing turned back into a camper. Ah, it's not gonna be anywhere near as big a project as last year, so everything's pretty much still in shape. I haven't even bothered taking the mats out, and it feels like just yesterday I came back from the last van trip. Uh, but I'm gonna have to clean this thing out, and uh, I'm gonna make some improvements. I learned a thing or two about van dwelling the last time I was in this thing, uh, mostly about how to organise stuff. I actually had way too much shit with me, which uh, uh, made everything a bit more cramped than it really had to be. So, uh, for this year, I think I'm going to cut down on some storage, take a whole less, uh, whole lot less stuff with me, and uh, I'm going to have a bit more a pleasant experience. So, I'm not going to be going probably as far as last year, uh, but uh, I do have uh, a fair amount of stuff to take care of. Uh, for, for, for the time being, I'm mostly just going to try and get the bed in because I've got a, uh, I got a weird travel schedule. Uh, but I am going to have to uh, give the inverter a bit of a once over, you can't see it there. Uh, the box I made for my little travel inverter has absolutely fallen apart, and the power steering pump is, has been making some rather disconcerting noises for the longest time. I think the uh, bearing in the front, of, where the hell is it, there it is. I think the bearing in front there might be uh, going out of whack, which uh, could cause some issues. I wouldn't want that thing to seize while I'm driving. Uh, so there's some stuff going on, but I've got to just clean this thing out. I'm not using this to clean, that's has just been flopping around there for a while. Broken vacuum cleaner with a new motor. <sighs> Van life ahead. <sighs> and there we have an empty back for once. I've vacuumed it and I've taken the liberty of opening the hood. Uh, because uh, there's this pesky diesel leak here which uh, I figured I'd remedy. Uh, Ross in the Netherlands gave me some suitable fuel hose to repair this with because this is oversized and way too floppy so we've got some leakage around here which I'm pretty sure is coming from uh, the attachment on that injector and I think there's nothing actually going on back here because these hoses are much more sturdily in place and we've got yeah look I've, I've wager that to move the fluid we're seeing down there is just going to be a diesel that's been blown back as the vehicles have been moving. So this is just kind of going in that kind of a traje trajectory. So this is going out. Hopefully this thing is going to stop smelling like a, an old boat. Yeah, comparing these lines there's no contest. This is just so soft and floppy and rubbery, which is nice for some stuff. Whereas this is so much more rigid and it's also about one size small in diameter, so it's going to fit a bit more snugly on the actual holes, which is a very good thing. Yep, that is such a nice and tight fit. Perfect. Ah, there's a little copper wire fastener to go with that. Can't fit it one-handed, but I think you get the idea. Ah, there we go. All new lines, front to back. Not going to bother with this little uh, nub because there's no fly going through and it hasn't leaked. So I give everything a pretty good wipe down with some WD-40 and then dry paper. So it should be rather obvious if we've got any leakage around here now. Uh, I know that there is uh, a leaky oil seal around the uh, camshaft up in front there, so this area is always going to be a bit oily, but I don't really care about that. That's just pretty much good for the engine, giving it a protective cover, uh, but uh, the diesel is a different story since that smells rather bad and just gives the entire vehicle a bit of an odour. But uh, let's just... Uh, Give this thing a test run, see if we've got any real obvious leakage going on. <laughs> Looking pretty fine to me, gonna let it run for a while.
have a look at that. I think we've got some leakage from the bottom of that injector. That sounds on. That's surprising. I guess I'm going to have to talk that down a bit. Well, I couldn't actually get at it uh, with, any, with any sensible tools without uh, disassembling everything. But uh, I <laughs> tightened down I just give it a little, little nudge with a wrench. Uh, the little minute amount of torque it could apply it seems to have fixed it. Because it's been running for a while now and there are no more bubbles. It could also have been because I just used some torque, most, most torque of all actually, to re tighten down this high pressure line, so perhaps we're going to be good to go. It wasn't a lot of leakage anyway, but any diesel leakage is bad leakage, so here's to hoping. Alright, there we go. The HVTF highly versatile Toyota floor mat sound cover has been reinstalled and I have used WD-40 for one of the few legitimate uses for it there are, and that is to clean this gasket surface here. Uh, and this rubber gasket here to uh, stop any grime and dirt from allowing a gap in the gasket because as you can imagine uh, the integrity of this gasket is rather important for the sound level in this vehicle. So I think I'm just gonna call those up here and move on to other service. And there we go, everything's all back together and I'm giving it a, a bit of an oxidation treatment by vaporizing a bit of bleach and then letting it run through the fan to give it a bit of a fresh smell after all that work. Alright, I finished off last night by giving the van a quick wash, just with a pressure washer. Hasn't been this shiny for a long time even though it isn't particularly shiny. Uh, but today I really want to get to pretty much everything uh, basically uh, finished. Uh, I want to get the electrics and uh, the bed installed so I'm obviously bringing out the electrics and I've got the bed over there. Uh, probably not going to get the solar panel on today. It isn't necessary for the uh, rather rushed trip I'm going to have to make in a couple of days. But uh, I'm going to use a different arrangement scheme for the electrics this time. Uh, last year I had the batteries standing like this and then I shoved them up against a wheel well standing side by side going out, out like that. But uh, that wasn't a very good use of space. Yeah, the batteries just turned into kind of giant blob in the middle of everything which uh, just got in the way. So this year I'm thinking I'm going to flip them over like that. These batteries can lie down just fine. They were lying down in the original installation so they shouldn't be puking anything. Uh, and I'm going to put the inverter on top of them because I do have a vertical space for that since they are such narrow and tall batteries uh, to begin with. And that will kind of be able to put stuff on top of them which I couldn't do before so I'll pretty much have a continuum of space where I can put things uh, uh, along the length of the bed so I'm just gonna load up both of them see where they fit and then give a bed on top of them pretty much they should be pretty quick installation since I already got all the wiring looming stuff done from last year. It's just a question of connecting everything up again. Sadly, this year I'm probably going to be without my speakers uh, because the foam surround has started falling off of them and I'm not going to have time to fix them before I go, which is a bit of a shame. I'm going to have to figure something else out for that. Alright, the electrics are starting to take some shape. I've got everything strapped down, installed, uh, as good as it's going to get it. Uh, not quite as tight as uh, it was last year. Uh, the inverter is just pretty much tied down with a knot, so it has some ability to it, but things are going to be fine. Also, the batteries don't actually have any vertical tie down, they just have this strap which goes over the handle there, which will prevent it from tipping up, uh, but I'm kind of just not expecting to be driving in such a fashion that the 200 kilogram lump of inverter and batteries go flying. And if I do, I'm pretty sure I'm fucked anyway. Uh, so the uh, QDSCC uh, is uh, tied down, it's just bungee cord for battery as intended. It's a bit trickety, I would like to have it a bit better, but uh, there isn't going to be any strain on any of the connections, even if it is moving around a bit, because there's a long lead going to the positive terminal, 
and uh, all the wiring's coiled up behind it, so any vibration is going to just get caught up in the wiring slack. I even have a bit of a loom, a turn on the inverter wiring, so it's all pretty stable. There's not going to be any movement of this wiring here. It's actually working out rather well. Uh, another thing that's going to be different for this year is I'm not going to have the shelving that I had on the bed last year. Uh, if you remember, I had a bed there which had a bit like old rack cases uh, which were uh, like 40 centimeter deep shelves. That's just not going to be there this year because I've used those rack boxes for other stuff. So well, I might get a bit creative. I'm going to have a large empty hole there to fill with whatever. Uh, but. Uh, I really are starting to reach the stage where I can lift the bed in because this needs to go in first and it seems to be quite operational and there's the bed just need some sheets and this is instantly look, starting to look a lot more like a camper uh, and uh, the advantages of the new layout for the batteries is uh, immediately obvious uh, even with that uh, uh, crossing strap there doesn't look too good but uh, there's actually pretty much clear passage from the front to the rear which we didn't have before now all these traps are a bit of a bother I really should make some kind of frame which essentially bolts onto that those straps and allows me to bolt stuff onto there but I don't know how to do that right now so this will have to do and it's going to be pretty alright. I think I'm going to have ample space for all my other supplies. I'm going to bring way less supplies. Uh, pretty much going to do the same layout with kitchen here, since I can just lift this up and have a bit of a table to work with. That's going to be pretty alright. I am considering trying to install some kind of table here to facilitate spare time. Just sitting here and just kind of doing whatever one wants to do rather than actually having, as I did the last trip when I had the kitchen here with my little gas burner and a pot on top of that where I just uh, <laughs> had my laptop sitting on the top of the kitchen which wasn't very good for, you know, gas integrity. They're not intended to be used as tables. Hmm. Well, really, well, we're starting to look pretty good. And plenty of time left in the day. So there are a couple more things I want to improve. I'd like to get some uh, better insulation for the rear windows because those are leaking a uh, silly amount of heat if it gets cold. Uh, same goes for the front windows. And I'd like to uh, get some better, make it a bit blacker because uh, as you can see there's a lot of light shining through, not just the little spotties but the entire thing is lighting up if we've got sun hitting it and I'd rather yeah, you can see the windshield wiper there and I'd rather have a setup where it allows me to have a rather dark place in here during the daytime if I so decide uh, but that's a project for some kind of future at least now I've got a car I can sleep in Perhaps we can give this all up and on today. Hmm. And there we have my solar going. Doing 20, what's even though it's rather late in the evening. And there is the panel. So, uh, compared to last year, uh, I have opted for a much, uh, a mounting much further back on the vehicle. Uh, this is for two reasons. Uh, mostly. Uh, one, uh, there's a fair amount of noise when you're driving coming from that area, so I figured moving that back uh, is going to make it a bit more quiet. And the second reason is uh, I can get a little ledge back here of solar panel, which uh, is going to provide a marginal amount of a cover for when I'm uh, having the back doors open. Uh, so, wiring wise, it's identical pretty much to the last year. I've just uh, zipped out everything to this rail and Connected up to old wire, which is going with magnets down the side of a vehicle to the solar connector, which is underneath there. I think that's going to turn out rather well. It's lasted for almost one year by now, and I think we're going to be doing pretty well. 
so I've got to most stuff wired up. I uh, need to get the fan remote installed, but uh, we do have fans. We have a remote there stuck in low mode, but they are working, so uh, that's not a whole lot left to do. Oh, yeah, and also, also got the light up there wired up. I hadn't removed the wiring for it, so it was just to plug and play. I still need to wire up my little IKEA lamp, which uh, usually sits there, but that's no biggie. And then pretty much put the carpets in and be ready to go. So I'm, real, I'm rather happy with this. Uh, the intention with the like system I've put together with this is that I should be able to convert the van from work van to camper van in one day, and uh, I've done it in pretty much one day. I've been going at it since, uh, I don't know, uh, five o'clock and now it's... Uh, Okay, I've been going at it since perhaps more like 3 o'clock, yeah. And now it's 8 o'clock, so that's like 5-6 hours of hard work. And we've gone most of the way. I'm very happy with that. Alright, we've got pretty much everything installed now. Uh, just some interior stuff and general packing left to do. And I think we'll take a test run and see how many pieces fall off. So I'm thinking it's going to be... Pretty okay. Uh, the solar panel is not mounted as well as it was last time, uh, whereas uh, the last time it used the mount furthest toward the center of the panel. And this time it's using one mount in the center and uh, one mount right at the edge, so it doesn't have as much support around the center, so it might be a bit more wobbly and uh, a resonance E when driving at high speed, but uh, I'm just betting here. Well, I'm just uh, determining that it's gonna be all right because uh, there isn't really anything I can do about it due to the way my roof rack is designed, i.e., uh, sternly welded together. But there's no room for adjustment, so it only fits uh, a very narrow range of uh, spots in the roof. Here we go. The things falling off. Yeah, that's looking rather beautiful, isn't it? Driving out of the sunset. Well, I'll just uh, break so half of the carpet roll itself up. Uh, but uh, none of the important stuff's moved. Batteries in place, inverters in place, all that stuff. Beds in place. That's looking pretty okay. I don't mind that at all. We can say fast now a bell have time to film anything, uh, but uh, long story short, uh, the speakers I've been using for my van, uh, they have, uh, in the back, they've uh, suffered foam failure, so I won't have time to re foam these uh, uh, before I go. So I have retrofitted the cabinets, which have a special mount for them, uh, like in the van, uh, with some horrible Logitech woofers of the same dimension, uh, and uh, uh, they have sound absolutely awful in comparison. They have n nothing at all below 100 hertz. So the way I've solved that in a hurry is to take one of these uh, Breeze audio boards. Uh, I've built a little subwoofer uh, out of some scrap wood. Well, well it's, it's an old cabinet which I've modified with a bit of a better driver. Uh, and uh, now I've taken one of the Breeze amplifier boards and modified that to actually have a high pass filter on the... Uh, Satellite tape to prevent clipping. We've got, you can say, I've replaced a couple of these electrolytic with these little ceramics there. And uh, that seems to, that, there are the coupling caps for between the uh, volume pot and the uh, actual amplifier IC, and that seems to put a roughly like 80, perhaps 90, 100 ish hertz high-pass filter on the satellites. Uh, these actually do not have a high-pass filter on the satellites uh, from a factory, which is absolutely stupid. So you can just, uh, yeah, you're going to be clipping everything unless you install, unless you replace those caps. Uh, pr should probably be using some s slightly higher values still, but they're the smallest caps I've got easily available right now. So now I'm just going to reassemble this and get it in the van quickly. Ah, oh, there we have the mock-up of the audio system. Uh, so there's the ugly little amp, uh, there's the ugly yeah, little subwoofer, all this is around 12 volts, so we've got about 14 watts per channel to play with, but it's sufficient. I 
Smart Services. Use what they can see be horrible, horrible Logitech speaker drivers in the other words, very nice speakers. They're awful, but eh, what you gonna do? Special made for these boxes. And some, some of you might notice I've been not playing the usual music and have to put out my thanks to Combat Player for licensing me his entire music library. So we're gonna have some more tunes to play with when the time rises. It's turning into a bit of a party van, isn't it? Oh. Alright, so it turns out I've got another extra day to prepare for leaving. And I have made the most of it. I've been to work today, so that's not a whole lot of extra time to go. But I have spent that taking care of some interior decoration. And haven't thought to film any of it. I've just uh, cut up uh, this old uh, drawer box, an old, uh, I don't know, what, whatever you'd call it. It used to have two drawers you'd pull out of there. Uh, drawers are long gone. This thing's been gathering dust for forever. And I wasn't going to film any of it since it's a rather boring project for me anyway. I just bolted together. Yeah, but uh, it seems <laughs> I got the measurements rather a bit tighter uh, than I would decide because as you can see I'm having to uh, physically force the batteries inside. There's like one millimeter too little tolerance. So I figure that was a bit amusing. I'm literally pumping this in uh, using, using brute force. It is going, it's just a matter of uh, stretching this upper joint a bit, it's going to pop slightly. Uh, but after that, it's going to be all good. And I'm going to have something wooden to actually main stuff to, because I was trying to fit more and more stuff on top of the batteries, and I figured they're not going to be happy having like all those spot load points, like the feet of the inverter, which you, by the way, managed to entirely wreck when I took it out because I ruined this positive terminal. Also the negative. Uh, one of these terminals here, there we go, is fucked because the actual threading just snapped in half. It's still attached, uh, it's just that the uh, caps come off, which isn't a good thing. But I'm going to just have to deal with that for the time being. I don't use the inverter too much anyway. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. And I do have the Anderson connector for input uh, in the worst case scenario. That is just that can only handle 50 amps, whereas the inverter draws about 150 on the full load. <sighs> but I'm just going to keep on forcing my battery in. I'll see you in a bit. Ah, there we have it installed. Uh, it's uh, one trouble. Well, I've just uh, made a little bracket there to keep it onto the uh, stock factory load points of a vehicle. And uh, I've done a bit of an ugly thing in the back here. Uh, where I've just taken one of these wall brackets and shoved it through factory bolting and mounted it to the side of this. I don't think... Uh, th this thing is so heavy, uh, this, the, the van is going to tip over before this actually starts sliding back and forth. So this is just a little something, just in case I'm about to get in an accident or something. Uh, no matter what, if I flip it or something, everything back here is going to go airborne anyway. So I'm just counting on not having an accident. Uh, so in banging the batteries in and uh, uh, mating everything it suffered a bit of damage in the edge but this is just cheap thin fiberboard so I wasn't really expecting this to turn out perfect anyway you can see how measurements were like a few millimeters off which isn't bad considering that uh, this uh, the top mount was actually factory. Uh, it's, uh, I didn't measure it. Uh, I just went upstairs and went zip with a Measuring tape and went, ah, oh, this looks about right, and then I made it, and yeah, that's good enough for me. So now I'm just going to mount all the electronics back, try and get the inverter on it, and uh, I'm going to have a little something much nicer. Above all, this is going to sit pretty flush there, so I can actually tie something down to the front of it, like the uh, QDSCC. And well, the beauty of the QDSCC is t ripping this system out, it just took like 20 seconds plus unbolting the battery pack. It's so easy to just unplug everything high current from that side, unplug everything low current from that side, and Bob is your uncle. 
it works perfectly. So I'm very happy with my assistance design of that one. Uh, but yeah, going to keep on doing, going. I've got a lot of stuff left to do tonight. And it is not bright at all. Uh, there we have it. Bolted down and wired up. I've got my hi-fi ugly ass subwoofer bolted down there. It's sitting very snugly up against the bed and it's actually making it a bit more comfortable since the springs uh, touch the woofer and uh, uh, makes just stops the bed from sagging so much. And I've got the inverter bolted down just with some of that uh, uh, piping holdy downy stuff and it's sitting sturdy than it ever has. Uh, QDSCC held down with the bungee cord as is custom and all the wiring going neatly in quotes down the side and I have gained a lot of space doing this really all this gap wasn't there uh, prior to having this little wooden construction and I also have extra space for stuff there and even some extra back there, and that is due to all of those horrible straps just no longer being there. Uh, I don't have all these diagonal horrible lines going everywhere. I'm rather happy with this, and to be frank it's probably going to stay in place better as well, since uh, I did bolt it down pretty good. So, how positive. That is an upgrade, making everything quite a bit more manageable. Shame it had to be ever so slightly too narrow though. Alright, extra day in full force, and I've used this day, which is the actual extra day, uh, to construct this little uh, plywood table using some uh, just scraps from when I bolt the uh, ceiling in here. So the plan is, uh, just uh, it's 40mm plywood, I've just stapled some pieces together for rigidity. It's uh, not intended to be a workbench, it's just something to put like a glass or your laptop onto and I'm planning to bolt it uh, uh, onto there. Yeah, I was a bit concerned because of the height of this thing but it will clear if I mount it right up there which will put it pretty much at level with the bed which is very nice. So I've got these uh, hinges uh, were used of course from some old industrial equipment and these are a bit unique, they fold that way. They are very very springy and stern. Arrgh. Oh yeah, yeah I can't do one hand but this part falls that way. So if I bolt them to the wall, like so, they will push the table up against the wall when it's folded up and it they will support it when it's folded down. I'll have to see if I have to have some like the strings going up there to actually support the outermost edge of it because all well, these do not have a very large surface area so it could damage the wood. Uh, if uh, if the strain is too large, uh, but we'll just see about that. Uh, first order of business is just to uh, bolt these onto here. There's uh, metal backing up here. But I don't think there's going to be metal backing for the lower bolt. It might be though, uh, but. Uh, We'll see, I don't think the lower one's going to be too critical since uh, pretty much all the weight is going to be on the top bolts anyway. Uh, there's going to be some load to put above this cardboard, which is just yay. Uh, but yeah, going to bother this on now. Uh, well, we've got the hinges mounted. Uh, it went rather well, except uh, you can easily tell the difference between the smart person and yours truly because uh, I started drilling a mount here without first checking whether or not there was some weird metal terrain behind and of course there's this like big hole there so not only did I break a drill but I didn't uh, learn my lesson so I thought I took another drill and started drilling the other hole before realizing how screwed up I was so I had to move that hitch over there uh, not too big of a deal so it's going to be a bit wobbly in one end otherwise it's looking pretty good and uh, a nice thing about these hinges uh, as can, if we actually fold it you can see that the starting action in this is actually moving moving slightly out from the uh, wall so I can mount the tabletop pretty flush with the edge there and it's uh, uh, gonna tr not gonna pinch uh, when, when I try to fold it which is very nice. Uh, so, just gonna do that. Alright, and there is the pretty much finished product. As you can see, I opted to go for a couple of supports since uh, uh, this thing is uh, rickety even with them. 
uh, which uh, I wouldn't expecting anything else to be honest. Uh, but uh, the problem of uh, sag is made worse by the fact that these uh, uh, hinges are actually made to kind of swing open. They're made for doors initially, so this is usually flush with a wall, so they end up tilting down somewhat, so the entire thing was at like a 10 degree angle down. And you can also see uh, that spring tension is actually what's causing uh, this flex along the axis there. Uh, it isn't as bad as looking on camera since the thing is rather wide and I feel I could comfortably place you know, a laptop or something on there. Uh, not anything super heavy, but that's not the point. The biggest criteria for this thing is for it to be thin so it can fold up nicely. And uh, that's what this screw is there for, because I've cut a hole in the insulation and put a magnet there. So that I can actually fold this up and just poke it on there. And it's going to sit there pretty tight and pretty flush. The hinges do stick out a bit, but I don't think there's any much more compact solution to be found since this enables the entire plate to be uh, folded in uh, flush against uh, this pretty much there isn't too much space at all there which a traditional little hinge wouldn't give me also these were free that's probably the biggest criteria to be honest so I'm just gonna try and see how long this lasts I'm not expecting it to be the best table in the world I'm not expecting it to be much of a table at all, actually I just want something other than my gas kitchen to place my laptop on if I'm wasting time back here. But I think it's going to be good enough for me. If I can find some paint, I will put it on this. Van dwelling, where you can paint your kitchen table while sitting in your bed. There we go, all painted. I even had enough paint left over to get a couple of extra coats around the edges and all the seams, so it's almost entirely covered. There are two layers on the top, one layer for the most part on the bottom, and that is literally all the paint I've got left, so it turned out rather well. I've finally used up the paint can I bought for this stuff, so that's not bad at all. I'm not too concerned with the fashion, just don't want that melting into the paint. I do not care about that being white. Function is what matters. <laughs> and this, this looks like a, a wartime table made like during the Great Depression or during World War II when materials were sparse. <sighs> anyway, I need dinner. There we have a finished product. And didn't turn out all that bad. Print my standards aren't high. It should be reasonably drawn out, so we can just fold it up and use a magnet to keep it in place. That should be rather sturdy while we're driving. I did also use some of my spare paint to put a very ugly coat on the hinges and uh, clean up this little mishap over there. And uh, once I uh, realised I still had some paint to just to clean the brush on that tyre, so it's going to be a bit interesting seeing how long that's going to last. It's water-based paint, so that's going to fall off in like two kilometres. But all in all, I'd say that's a rather good project. Uh, I'm wondering if that's going to have any effect on the insulation capability of this wall, uh, because you do get a fair amount of heat coming through this stuff. If you, when, when the sun is shining, if you put your hand here, you can feel the heat. But now we've actually got an extra air gap here in this white painted wood. So I'm thinking we're going to have a bit of a hot spot behind that and we might not get as much heat coming into the cab when the sun's on. don't think it's going to do much to the cold though, since that's just got to do with insulation raw and there's not much radiation going on. Yeah, that's not bad. Brought a laptop. Let's give it a proper test. Right on the edge. Yeah, that does flex and bounce. It's, it's good enough. It's useful. And a perfect computer like that. So that most of the weight is kind of focused uh, between the string and the hinges here. 
That's going to be rather useful, I think. All right, I had some dinner and I had a think and a dig and I found some of this uh, rather suitable metal uh, angle stuff lying around randomly in the yard. Uh, so I actually bit the bolt and made a little metal edge for this table uh, because it's it would have been perhaps a bit too unsturdy as it was. This doesn't make it a huge deal better but since we actually have some girth there it does provide a fair amount of extra support. I think if I put my laptop down there this time round yeah that is no longer flexing in the middle as it was. This is qu quite a considerable improvement actually. So yeah um, I had to kind of custom make these screws cut, cut them because this is only eight millimeters thick uh, so there isn't a whole lot of wood on there to grab onto. Uh, we'll see how long these last. If they give way, I'll have to uh, get some nuts and bolts and uh, thread through there and instead try and find some with some rather uh, shallow heads. But for the time being, I think this is going to do rather nicely. And daylight is pretty much faded, so I think... <sighs> I'm going to call this a night, and I guess we'll answer the question what do you get in one extra day of planning, and that would be a rather a shuttle put together battery rack and a very thin rickety table. But rest assured, these things are very, very valuable, and for the time it and cost, i.e. nothing, it took to construct them. I can't say I could be much happier. This table, uh, that is something I have missed so much uh, during my previous van travels, because just having, like, uh, if you don't know, I'd usually have my kitchen here, just a big gas container with a burner on top, and just having a laptop on that doesn't really feel very good. So the solution is really, really proper. <sighs> but I'm going to call it tonight, and I think that's pretty much all I'm going to have time to plan before I have to just pack and get a move on. So thank you for watching. Cheerio. I have to say though, the feel of taking this up, going over that ridge and the hinges, and then just knocking it there with magnet is a very satisfying feeling.